Okay, this is basically basically a part two to my last video about insectoids. And towards the end of my last video, I was talking about uh, the X Files episode, Filet Adukes, and how it really corresponds with um, the insectoid aliens and their control over this planet, and just how how they do it. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of symbolism within that episode, you know, the, that that portrays exactly how they do. To me, um, and and, uh, and I'll read I'll read it to you guys the episode. I mean, I'll read I'll read on the episode right now. I got the link on uh, it's on Wikipedia. But the episode's called Filet Dukes: The X Files. And Filet Dukes is the 19th episode of the fifth season of American sci science fiction television series, The X-Files. And it was written by Vince Gilligan and directed by Kim Manners. The episode originally aired on May 10th, 1998 in the United States on, on the Fox Network. The episode is a monster of the week story, a standalone plot which is unconnected to the series, wider mythology, or fictional history. The episode earned a Nielsen household rating of 11.0 being watched by 17.63 million viewers upon its initial broadcast. It has received largely positive reviews from its critics. The show centers on FBI Special Agents Fox Mulder, David Deshonshi, whatever his name is, he's a kike, and Dana Scully, Gillian Anderson, who is probably another kike, for all I know, who, who work on cases linked to the paranormal called X-Files. In this episode, Mulder encounters a delusional man, Gary Lambert, Brian McCarson, who believes his boss, Greg Pincus, John Apicella, may be a monster, and decides to take an entire office building, including Mulder, hostage to prove it. Lambert is eventually killed, but somehow Mulder inherits his ability to see Pincus as a monster. After Mulder claims that Pincus is a monster, he is locked in a psych psychiatric hospital, only be to be saved by Scully, the only person who believes him. The episode's Anti-gnostic bug creature was created by means of prosthetic suit that was worn by a stunt woman. The suit was highly ridiculed behind the scenes. To fix the perceived issues with the monster, the produ production team gave the film two visual effects. Editor Laurie Calston George, who digitally altered the footage until it was seen deemed suitable. The episode's title is a reference to filet a dukes, a form of insanity shared by two people. It usually begins with one person who conceives of a delusional belief and then spreads it to another. Those, those two shared the same delusion. The plot. And this is the plot of the episode. In Oak Brook, Illinois, Gary Lambert, Brian Mark Markison, a telemarketer at a company called Vinyl Wright, believes that his seemingly normal boss, Greg Pincus, is an insect-like monster that only he can see in its true form. Walter Skinner, Mitch P Pelegi, orders Fox Mulder and Dana Scully to go to Chicago to do a threat assessment of a taped manifesto that mentions Vinyl Wright, which has seen a violent incident at its Kansas City offices. Mulder suspects that the case is so deliberate is, is a deliberate waste of time and tells Scully not to accompany him. Accompany him. During this meeting with Pincus, Mulder learns that the tape was sent to a local radio station with the demand that it, it be played 24 hours a day. On the tape, a man later revealed to be Lambert claims that a monster hides in the light and stalks employees at Vinyl Wright. Mulder, Mulder calls Scully and asks her to find past X-Files containing phrase. After one of Lambert's co-workers, Nancy Aronson, Cynthia Preston, is turned into a living corpse by Pincus. While appearing normal to everyone else, Lambert flees to his apartment and arms himself with a Type 884S rifle. Meanwhile, Scully calls Mulder to tell him that she found the phrase hiding in the light in a 1992 case from Lakeland, Florida that involves similar ac accusations of hidden monsters. Mulder admits that Scully should come to Chicago to help him with the investigation. He returns to Vinyl Wright's office and unwittingly walks into the middle of a hostage situation. Being held captive by Lambert, along with Pincus and other employees, as Scully arrives on the scene, Lambert divides hostages into real people and monsters, claiming that Pincus has turned several employees into zombies. Lambert shoots Mark Backus, one of the perpetrated zombies, when he tries to disarm him while briefly distracted by Mulder. 
When Lambert demands a camera to broadcast his warning, Scully arranges for a SWAT officer disguised as a cameraman to be sent in the building. Lambert, not knowing that the camera broadcasts only in a closed circuit, tells viewers about Pincus being a monster. As the lights are cut, Lambert forces Mulder to look behind him and see that Pincus, for an instant, is a large insect. Just then, the FBI smashes into the room with an armored vehicle and kills Lambert before he can open fire. Mulder questions Pincus and learns that he was present during the Vinyl Wright incidents in Kansas City in Florida. At his office, Mulder maps out all the reports of monsters hiding in the light against places Pincus has lived and worked. He tries to convince Scully that Lambert might have been right, but she accuses him of, ha of succumbing to a filet a dukes, or shared psychosis. With Lambert, Mulder asks Scully to do an autopsy of Mark Backus to see if there is any evidence of Lambert's claims, but Scully refuses. In an effort to prove Lambert right, Mulder goes to Lambert's home with Agent Rice. There, Mulder finds a map of Pincus, movements, and incidents of reported monsters, like the map Mulder made. Look out! Looking out a window, Mulder sees a corpse like Nancy Arison, a co-worker Lambert called a zombie, watching him. He runs outside to confront her, but she drives away in a car with Pincus. Meanwhile, Skinner asks Scully while Mulder has returned to Chicago. Scully covers for him and finds herself committed to performing that autopsy on Mark Backus. She is still reluctant and orders her assistant to only perform an external examination. He observes the body has been dead for between 48, hour, 48 hours and 72 hours, just over 24 hours since the shooting. Back in Oak Brook... Mulder has followed Pincus to the house of Vinyl Wright employee Gretchen Starnes. Mulder looks through the window and sees the monster leaning over the woman as she watches TV. Mulder breaks the window and then kicks in the door. Inside the house, he sees Starnes has been transformed into a zombie. Behind him, out of his sight, the monster walks across the ceiling. Mulder catches a glimpse of it crawling up outside of the house. Later at the FBI office, Starnes and Pincus complain to A.D. Skinner about Mulder's behavior. Mulder, seeing Pincus, begin to transform into the creature again and draws his weapon. He is restrained by a disbelieving Skinner and then sedated at a ho in a hospital. Mulder tells Scully that he saw the monster doing something to the back of his victim's head and begs her to look for evidence on the back of Bacchus' Bacchus head. Scully examines Bacchus' corpse and finds three puncture marks at the top of the spine, marking the corners of an equi equi equilateral triangle. That's interesting because aren't triangles supposed to be like binding? But anyways, though, um, and, and, and it reminds me of triangles because a lot of people use this method to um sub to uh enslave demons back back during old times. And I think they I think they still do now, or is it the nine foot circle? I can't remember. But I think triangles has something to do with like binding. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. But anyways, though, um, going back on topic here, Mulder, Mulder still restrained in his bed at the hospital sees a sil silhouette of a monster at the window. He screams for the nurse. But she has already been bitten and opens the window to let the monster in. Scully tries to visit Mulder, but the nurse refuses access. Excuse me. Suddenly, Scully sees the nurse as a corpse, releases, realizes that Mulder is in danger, and runs into Mulder's room. There, she sees the monster on the wall and shoots at it. It leaps through the partially open window, breaking the glass and wooden frame. Back at the FBI headquarters, Scully testifies to Skinner that she believes Mulder is, a mentally, is mentally sound and fit for duty. Nothing that Pincus and several others mis, mis, noting that Pincus and several others mysteriously disappeared. That there was an intruder in Mulder's room and that Bacchus did have some sort of chemical in his system. Afterwards, she tells Mulder that she said it was Foley du Dukes and describes it as a madness shared by two, but she does not specify who the two were. The episode ends with a different man at a telemarketing agency in Camden, Missouri, noticing the same ominous signs of the creature. And that is the episode for you guys. Anyways, though, um, it mentions an episode of this creature, and I've seen the episode for myself. It's a really good episode. I, I love, I love this episode, and it reminds me so much of my life. But um, it's a it, complete different situation. Same problem, but complete different situation. And there's a lot of symbolism in this episode that corresponds with my life and, and, and the world around me. But anyways, though, so, uh, these insect insect-like creatures, you could call them the greys or or the the man the mantoids, the mantis-like creatures, or whatever. They stuck a insect-like parasite onto my aura that 
what Satan and his demons should have done was should have cured my meth addiction. They should have. I I don't know how many times in the past that I made. I actually went down to my altar. I had an altar built in one of my rooms. I had a room within my house that was solely dedicated to Satan and the demons. I even went as far as having uh, my family paint the room blue. And I had, you know, peacock feathers in the room, a peacock vase, uh, a very nice looking altar. Um, I made this like collage of satanic symbols and, and um, Satan sigils and all, all the demon sigils into one big old picture. And I framed it and I put it on my altar and it, and it looked... The room itself looked abs absolutely beautiful, and it had um, a lot of ancient Egyptian art artwork inside the inside the room too. And um, each time you walked into that room, you always had this like mystical feeling about it, this this uplifting feeling. But you know, I mean, just because a room has a very uplifting feeling about it, doesn't mean that the beings that that put that uplifting feeling inside the room are good, because you know, um, angels. Uh, even even the joy of Satan says that's how angels lure Christians into believing that, you know, going back to Jesus Christ and shit like that, is that these angels come to these human beings and they and they um, portray loving energy, loving and caring and comforting energy, beautiful energy, very beautiful energy, and these Christians fall victim to it. They do the same thing with um, spiritual Satanists as well, and, uh, you know, coming in the form, you know, coming in the form of these beautiful demons. When it, in reality, that's probably not even what they look like. They're probably large insects hiding in the light, quote unquote, hiding in the light, quote unquote, and um and give off this beautiful energy and you know it's just so beautiful and calming and, and blah blah blah. But you know you get the point I'm trying to make. And um they threw this, this parasite on me, which eventually got past my aura and started merging with my astral body. Now I'm losing uh, uh, my memory's getting bad. I'm losing more. It feels like I don't want to. I don't want to say this. I don't want to confirm it because maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just stuck on this one level. But I do know if I do meth one more time, that this thing will take total control of my body, of my mind, of my soul, my my imagination, everything, and um, and I will become a literal a literal zombie, I believe. And I'm already almost there. I'm, I'm already pretty much. I'm I'm like half zombie. Uh, um, and and then one song they play on the radio all the time to to fuck with me is I'm half the man I used to be. I'm half the man I used to be. Yeah, I mean you guys probably know what song I'm talking about, but they play that song on the radio. I mean they they do certain shit like that to fuck with me. But um, but this is one reason why they kept me addicted to meth. And I did many rituals in the past to uh asking certain demons to help cure my addiction. And, and I would have cured it if this parasite that was latched on my aura at the time, when it, it, cause it got in my, it got in the way of absolutely everything I fucking did. I, it was, it was even very difficult for me to meditate, even when it was latched on my aura and not my astral body. But once it got past my aura, due to all the holes in my aura, due to my meth addiction, which is what they wanted in the first place, and then once it latched onto my astral body, no longer my, but you know, got past my aura and lashed, lashed on my astral body. Now it's nearly damn fucking impossible to even meditate. So you know, um, that path to godhood pretty much is hopeless. But they're not there anymore. But anyway, so um, anyway, so uh, what was it? It's blocking my memory now and trying to make me sound like an ass. Um. It hides itself very good too, <laughs> and now I'm now I'm totally forgetting about what I was gonna say next right after that because I was coming on to a good point and then, boom. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yes, yes, I remember. The whole reason why they kept me on meth. They had the power, and and, and Joy Satan members will make up excuse after excuse. Because I brought this up to them, and they, and they said, It's not Satan and his demons' jobs to, fi to, to fix your meth habit. You got the strength to do it on your own, so why don't you? And it's like, fucking, it's like, um, because there is a parasite on me that, that literally kept me from, from reprogramming, rewiring my brain to get rid of the meth addiction permanently. And then, um, and before, be, when I, before I made that dedication... I was told on the Joy of Satan website that nothing would be able to touch me. Nothing would. Not on the astral, not in, not in real life. But guess what? 
that was a fucking lie because this parasite fucking attached itself to my aura and, and Satan and his demons should have lived up to their word and protected me, but they didn't. I didn't get no protection. If I was being protected right now, they would remove this spirit off me right right now, but they don't. The, I mean, there's a, there a reason why they put it on me and, and the reason's a sinister reason. There's a reason why they never got rid of my meth addiction, even though they had the power to get rid of it. They, they could telepathically rewire somebody's brain if they wanted to. They, they could telepathically rewire somebody's brain into not being lazy. And, and the Joy of Satan fucking members, they, they go on and on and make up excuses and excuses for these piece of shit gods. But, but, but all of them can be easily refuted. And then when you refute them, what do they have to say next? Nothing. Just a bunch of insults and, and, and name calling. That's it. That's all I ever got out of these fucking little kids and these fucking Jews. But anyway, so um, going back on topic, uh, I turned into that. I pretty much turned into into that zombie, that drone, and um, and uh, that's the reason why they they got me hooked on meth because meth was creating those holes in my aura. The more, more the more my sight, my the more my aura went down. The, the less protection my astral body got. And once once it gets past, once the parasite gets past your aura and, and latches onto your astral body, you're through. You're done. It's a done deal. Throw out all hope. I mean, uh, well, maybe the best hope you have is... Uh, I don't know. I mean... Uh, yeah, just just hope that you don't fucking end up fucked up in your next life. Or um, hope that, you know, you dissipate into nothing and non-existence. Because I can see how these things can fucking damn you for eternity. And keep you stuck, even on a place, on, a, on an astral, forever. So, you know, don't let it get past your aura. Don't let it get past your aura, because once you do, you're, you're fucked.